IHGE, the old Intercontinental Hotels Group, is obviously suffering historically low occupancy levels. The CEO, Keith Barr, says the pandemic is the biggest challenge the hotel industry has ever faced. Keith Barr joins me now. Um, firstly, let's, your numbers are baked for the first quarter. We've seen them. Second quarter will be even worse. How have you managed to circle the wagons so that the hotel company at least survives in terms of raising capital, ensuring that you, have a, you will have a business that can reopen? Well, it's great to talk to you again, Richard, and clearly this is the biggest challenge <clears throat> the industry's ever faced. And uh, when we saw what started in China then spread internationally, January and February were reasonably good months. Uh, then we saw RevPAR fall significantly in March, and it's on track to fall by 80% in April, too. And so, again, historic drops in demand around the world. And our focus initially clearly was safety and security of customers, because we have many customers self-isolating in our hotels, safety and security of our colleagues who are operating in the hotels, working with our owners to help keep their hotels open, uh, also working with governments to help be part of the solution, whether that's housing frontline workers or people who need like the homeless. And then it was clearly focusing on the strength and liquidity right. of the company and making sure that we come through this okay. And so we announced some pretty significant cutbacks in terms of overall expenses back in March, cutbacks on capital. Uh, and then we clearly went out and had conversations with our banks and we've extended all of our banking covenants through the end of 2021. I went to the Bank of England and drew down 600 million uh, sterling um, so we have about two billion U.S. dollars in terms of liquidity, and so in a zero occupancy environment, which isn't where we're at today, we have uh, 18 months of viability. But we're running about mid 20% occupancies today, so people are still staying in hotels, and so the company is in a very, very strong position from a liquidity standpoint, and we're really focusing on supporting all of our customers and colleagues and owners. Right. So, if we look at an opening. At a, a, at a sort of a reopening of the business. Do you have a, a, a number, a date in mind where you think you will be able to open in a meaningful way? I realize different parts of the world are that you know, it could be Asia ahead of Europe, ahead of the United States. But airlines, for example, are saying they don't expect to be back until say 2022, 2023. What's your back of envelope date? Yeah, let me canter around the world and tell you where we're at today and then how we're thinking about the recovery. And so uh, in China, we had 190 hotels closed at the peak and now we only have a handful closed. So we're, we're, we're back in business in China. Across Europe, Middle East and Africa, we have about 50% of our hotels closed. But in the United States, we have less than 10%. And so we're about 15% hotels closed around the world, running about 25% occupancy, and that varies from market to market. But the question is about the recovery, and I was on a call the other day with about six CEOs, and we're all saying our, our crystal balls are a little bit blurry at the moment about when that happens, because it will really require when does social distancing begin to end, when do borders begin to open up. And so our view on recovery is that domestic businesses will recover first before big international ones. Mainstream businesses, which have a big drive component, will be, next, be part of that. It will be individual business travel and individual le leisure travel before groups, meetings, conferences, and events. And international long haul will probably be the last to recover. Fortunately, the vast majority of our businesses are big domestic businesses. And so our brand portfolio and our business right. place to where the recovery should be first. That fascinating, absolutely fascinating. But, but just to delve into that, uh, is, it, is it realistic? I can understand you can socially distance in a hotel because you've got different people in different rooms and you can ensure a very high quality of, of hygiene and disinfectant and all of that. But as an industry, it requires large numbers of employees in close quarters. Can you run large ho five-star hotels do you expect to keep all your brands yeah we absolutely going to keep all of our brands and you know we're quite excited i was talking to the six census team the other day which is our newest acquisition luxury resort brands um in china and in vietnam over the labor day holiday those hotels were almost full and so that shows the demand for travel 
but we have colleagues wearing personal protective equipment. We're focusing on social distancing. We're having to scale back services, clearly. Um, but it will vary around the world because we have some markets where there is no virus. And so we're able to operate more normally. But where the virus exists, we're having to think through all of those things and how we're going to make sure we can deliver a good guest experience, but in a safe way for colleagues and customers. And we're going to have to innovate. I mean, this industry is going to have to innovate around how it delivers food and beverage, how it, how it delivers the guest experience. And we have teams of people already working and thinking about that of what's the hotel stay of the future in this right. sort of environment. Keith, very, one final thought. Um, on behalf of all your uh, loyalty holders, thank you for, of which I'm one myself, uh, thank you for renewing or at least extending uh, anyone who has elite status. But even so, even though you've extended us all for next year, it's going to be very hard, isn't it? You may have to rethink some of these parameters of sta elite statuses in the loyalty programs in the future. I think we're going to have to evolve the next, you know, the next couple of years are going to be challenging. I don't know if it's a two year, three year recovery. I mean, we're well positioned because of our brand portfolio, but we've got to put the customers and our owners at the heart of this because that's how our business grows and thrives. And so we have to make sure that our loyalty program is relevant and evolves to how customer needs right. as much as the guest experience. 